Pay accident. Anybody ever done for us? Bob said, you never make mistakes, you don't have happy accidents. Okay. Love, Bob. When, when, we were, when my kids were really little, on Saturday afternoon, we'd put them down for, we'd make them sit and watch Bob at gunpoint. Right. <laughs> About lunchtime, you know, public television, and they just, and I'm like, yes. Thank you, you Lord. Imagine Bob. <laughs> you got fun now. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good. And, well, that's, that's, that's the saying that everybody keeps around. Yes. But the whole verse says this. I want, I want to explain this to you. All things do work together for good for those who love God. Okay. And to those who are called according to his purpose. If you want your life to work out for good, then you've got to answer these two questions. Do I love him and am I called for his purpose? Okay. Because, well, I don't know if I'm called. Well, he, at, at Matthew uh, 28, he tells us expressly to go, go therefore. It's yes. the same language that says for God so loved the world. So if you're claiming the Bible saves you, then the Bible has already sent you and called you into his purpose. Yes, sir. And when you answer, it's up to you. Many are called if you were chosen. Right. Yes. Right. Amen. Y'all got to prove up just the air. I'm just going to start a Genesis. Come on, Pastor. Right. I can go right to the right, right to the memorial. We'll just go right through it. Come on, perk up for that one. <laughs> So there's a lot of people that want to say, well, they all think work together for good if they have for a reason. Sometimes the reason is because they're just stupid and do stupid things. Come on, now. And that's your reason. And so if you want to blame everything that happens in your life because of your bad choices on God, then that's not, that's not fair, is it? But even when you're doing the right thing, even when you're doing what you know to do is right and best and, and making your best judgment and trying to obey God, even then bad things can happen. Here's where this promise kicks in, that even though bad things happen and you find yourself drawing short, I promise you I will make this turn into good. That's what you can hang your head on and put your head on. Now, next page. Well, I also understand the greatest fail in history was the crucifixion of Jesus. The greatest fail there was. Because had, it's because it was a mistake. Next page, I'll explain. Oh, wow. Matthew 15, 24. Jesus said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus came to be the Messiah for the Jewish people. Right. Next page. But well, what happened when he, he, he went into the synagogue one day, handed, they handed the book of Isaiah, he flipped over there to chapter 61, told them basically, I, I'm anointed to preach the gospel to the poor, to the to heal the broken heart, set the captives free. And when he said that, he said, he sat down somewhere and he said, this day, your, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And what I believe, historically, there was a seat on the podium of every mosque, every, every temple, to where the Messiah would come. Like when we were in, you have, when we were in Methodist youth group, we always kept one chair open for Jesus. Right. Not our heart, just in the chair. <laughs> You can come in the chair if you want to, but don't, don't, be, getting, don't be getting personal. Hmm. And so that's why I, I found to be the truth. And so anyway, and so they had this chair. So I believe that Jesus, when he said, this day this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing, and he sat down, I think he sat in that chair because it said every eye was upon him. Well, the Jews were so excited that the Messiah had come that they tried to throw him off a cliff. Sure did. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. What a mistake, right? Had they not rejected him, we wouldn't have had a shot. So this fail was part of the plan. Okay. But at the time, it may have seemed like, what are they doing? What is, yeah, I know the disciples, you know, I don't think they were just so ragtag as, as they made it to be to, to portray in, in our time. I believe they were tough loyal people, but suddenly their vision of what, how things ought to play out was just crushed in front of them. And even to them, it didn't seem like it made any sense. Does that make any sense to y'all? Yeah. Look over here. Yeah. Uh, let me help the baby. Let me help the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Next page. Uh -huh. Luke 10, Luke 20, 17 says, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was by design. But at the time, it didn't seem like it. How many things in your life will look like mistakes, hard times, difficulty, failures yes. that in God's plan have been by design to get you where he needs you to get you? Next, next thing. That's good. Had the Jews accepted Jesus as their Messiah, none of us had a chance. So the prescribed plan failed, and because it did, salvation came to all men. Aren't you glad? Next page. Yeah. 
Columbus left Italy. And they were tired of going across land and through every little nook and cranny to get to India. So he thought, you know what, everybody at that time, I don't you understand, that this was a valid belief to them that the world was flat. Right, right. And that if you sailed that far enough, you would just sail off the end of the earth. Even though the sun was round, the moon was round, and everything in the sky was round, the earth is flat. <laughs> and so anyway, if they read their Bible where Ezekiel said he sat on the circle of the earth, they might have figured it out. But you know, you got to read that good stuff, I guess. But anyway, so Columbus sailed to the west in hopes of finding a better route to India. He failed in that he never reached India, but he just happened to discover a brand new world, the one we're standing on. So his failure, to him was a failure, became a huge success because we were discovered. you understand how this is working? Have y'all get a pat yeah. in here? Next yeah. Yeah. We all think we know everything. In fact, we don't know Jack. Right. God just needs us to not give up. Yeah. What you think is failure might just be God changing course. What you call the end, God calls a new beginning. Yeah. If everyone rejects you, that's so that door that couldn't open any other way can finally swing wide. Yeah. 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 Did y'all know everybody know who Michael Jordan is? Mm -hmm. yeah. He didn't make his high school basketball team. Right. Yeah. What what did it take an end just decided to not try again? Yeah. What would, what would the world, I got a list of these things, I got some more about it, next page. Here's some things, look at me, before you read the list. These are things that were discovered by accident. They were trying to do something else, okay. and they had discovered this. A telephone. Alexander Graham Bell was trying to, uh, to invent a wireless, te te uh, a wireless telegraph, and he invented the telephone. Okay. And then he found the touch screen, and then he found those cute gold videos. <laughs> no, he didn't. I don't know if y'all know that, but that thing you're carrying is for to talk to somebody. <laughs> the microwave was, was discovered by accident. Some soldiers were standing out as they were testing a brand new radar for, the, for our missile system, and he had a chocolate bar in his, his shirt, and it melted. As was his insides, but nobody talked about that. Right. Right. This inside got really stiff for some reason. They used to call them radar ranges. Anybody? Uh, yeah. always being, uh, there was always a MIG flying over trying to shoot it down. Thank you for that one. I didn't know that would be coming. Plastic was discovered by accident. Velcro was discovered by accident. X-rays, potato chip, chocolate chip cookies. The lady that was making chocolate cookies forgot to put the things in there, so she just sprinkled them on the top. That's how we got chocolate chip cookies. Amen. Super glue, Teflon, the slinky. That was invented because we wanted to find some way to mimic somebody falling down the stairs so we could laugh. That's not true. Play Doh, the pacemaker, Sweet Low. Coca Cola was invented by accident. Thank the Lord. Penicillin. That, that, they said that, that, this is a quote that said, that bread's not too moldy. And so there you have it. Next page. Proverbs 24, 16 says, For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again. It's like I've had this argument going. If you fall down seven times, you get up. Amen. Seven, you're already up. <laughs> you don't get up and then get up again. Seven times. Come on now. <laughs> it means you just get up after you get knocked down. You get up again. How many times? So you, you have to get up again. Yes. You just keep going. If you lay there and wall in self-pity in your defeat and get a support group to talk about your defeat, nobody's going anywhere. But if you get your butt up, brush yourself off, pull your boots back up, and get after it again, I guarantee you there's another victory waiting for you. Yeah. Next page. Michael 7 8 says, Rejoice not against me on my enemy. When I fall, say it with me, I shall arise. That was really weak. Say it with me. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Next page. Psalm 145, 14 says, The Lord upholds all who fall. Yes. Raises up all who are bound. Yes. Lord, if, you, if you'll hang on to him, he won't let go of you. No, that's right. Okay. Next page. That's what he says. Galatians 6, 9. You know this is my heart because I'm preaching every other week, maybe every week. Let us not be weary in well-doing. You know why? Because you can get weary in well-doing. Yeah. 
Yeah. You, get, you have your worst day, and then you start looking around, and suddenly you see some people that haven't been trying as hard as you. Yeah. This is the definition of socialism. Not kidding. When you're trying as hard as you can and you're not getting rewarded for it, and people around you are not trying at all, they're getting rewarded. It has a tendency to make you just quit trying. That's right. Why should I bust my butt when the reward is the same for everybody? Yeah. That's not in my Bible. But God's very particular about that. He rewards people who diligently seek after Him. Yes, sir. Let us not grow weary when doing good, for in due season, if I say due season like you mean it, due season. we will reap if we do not quit. Well, I'm getting old, I'm getting that head on the earth too. You know what? It don't matter how old you are. Abraham, we know his name by his first name because of what happened to him when he was 100. Okay, that's why his story was written because of what happened at 100. He had to believe for 25 years, and even probably before that, he kept, don't you think he wanted a child before? He was 75, and his wife was married, and he didn't have opportunity. So he could have given up. He had 25 years to make an excuse for settling for less, but he did it. Right. Now because of what he did in his 100th year of life, we know his, we know his whole story by his first name. And the world knows him by his first name. Right. How many people can you say that? Right. That's right. What kind of an impact do you want to leave here with? I want to make a mark. I want to make a difference. Oh. Well, then hold on and just keep being faithful. Yeah. Okay, I want to tell you something. The faithful people make their marks. The people who yeah. flash in the pan here today go to mark. They don't make any. They don't make any, any lasting mark. It's amazing to me how many records are made and broken, made and broken. And you know, it's like, like the, who was it? That they just uh, passed Michael Vick's yard is with uh, uh, Lamar. Lamar. Lamar Jackson. Just passed Michael Vick's uh, all-time record, and Michael had to call him and say, hey, man, congratulations. <laughs> you know, he, that was hard for him. Then he fell that felt it right there. Right? Thanks for breaking my record. Thanks for breaking the one thing I could have been remembered for, but you know what? I've got news for you. If you're making those kind of records, those things burn up. But I'm going to tell you yes, what won't burn up is how many people are standing behind you. Yes, yeah, come on, Pastor. Come on! Yep. Next page. Good. That's good. Jeremiah 29, 11, stitched on every pillow I know, but you need to listen to it. It says, I alone know the plan I have for you. This is old covenant. If he was God, if he was the good God, the old covenant, you know he's the good God in the new. He says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to bring you prosperity, not disaster. Plans to bring about the future you could only hope for. Yes. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Life will teach you everything about that one. Of course. Teach you, right. you know what? Don't get your hopes up. After you've been, after you've been disappointed, had your yeah. nose bloodied on it, and you've been beaten back, something tells you don't go up there again. But you know what? You've got to stir it inside of you. You say, you know what? That wasn't God. That wasn't him. If he did it, it was my mistake. Lord, I hunger and I thirst after you, and I'm going to keep pursuing. And God says, if you'll just keep taking one foot and putting it in front of the other, I give you my word. I'm going to bring about the future you only hope for. Let it happen when you want it to, but you know what? Who are we serving? Ourselves or him? Next page. That's the good news Bible. <laughs> James 1, 2 through 4 says, My brother, count it all joy. The word count literally means commanded to be. Okay. Commanded to be. And I'm going to tell you, it's just, this is one of these things that it doesn't feel right, it doesn't sound right, it makes you look stupid. But if you're all about those things and you're never going to get anywhere, anywhere. Well, God says, I don't care if you feel. I don't care if it looks to everybody else. I'm giving you a command. You take whatever's going on and you command it to be joy. Because yeah, right. you don't lose your joy. Right. The devil has to bring back all this stuff. That's right. That's right. If you don't lose your joy, you're still in the presence of God. Amen. If you don't lose your joy, you still got your strength. If you don't lose your joy, the word, when it says that, that the joy of the Lord is our strength, it literally means our fortified house. It means that's what we're living. If I don't give up my joy and start pouting and, and throwing in with those that love the pouting, sit in the seat of the scornful, and, you know, the way of wickedness, if I stay where I'm supposed to stay, he says, if you'll just hang on, don't let go and let patience have its work. Patience. And, 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 and let's read this together. When you win, you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. 
and patience, let it have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Did anybody read in here that God says, don't pray for patience, because I'll beat the door out of you? No. If you ever hear that, will somebody help me with the elbow watch thing again and just say, because they don't know what they're Oops. talking about? He doesn't test your faith. You know why he doesn't? Because Jesus was tempted, and God can't be, he does not tempt people. Can't be tempted, neither does he tempt anyone. He's not a tempter. So if your patience is tempted, I mean, if, you're, if your patience is tempted, just let it do its work. You know what patience means? That means I got with the devil for eternity, because I know where I'm going, and I know where he's going. Amen. This body can rot off me and fall to the ground as dust. Yes. I'm still going to be in my daddy's lap and you're going to hell forever. So go right on, dog. Just give the best you got. Is that it? Right. Because you know what? I've already died once to myself, so I don't really have to go through death again. So what have you got? Is that right. it? Yeah. <laughs> That's good, Pastor. Say so perfect. perfect. Complete. Complete. Lacking. Lacking nothing. Nothing. Perfect. 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 Complete. Complete. Lacking nothing. nothing. Say it again. Perfect. perfect. Complete. Complete. Lacking nothing. How, how do you want to live? Some of you are ventriloquists. You're amazing. I didn't even see your lips move. <laughs> I don't got to do anything. Sam. That's right. You don't. But if you don't, you're going to get in trouble. Come on now. Sorry. It's time for the rest. Thessalonians 5 18 says, In everything, give thanks to the good Lord. Because he just wanted you to get that cancer. He wanted you to have that ingrown toenail to teach you a lesson. What he wanted you to have is that bad halitosis that nobody wants to be around you. It's, not, it's just will for your life. That's all he said. He said everything, he said in everything what? Give thanks. What does Thanksgiving do? Enter my gates with Thanksgiving. My courts with praise. What does Thanksgiving do? Keeps you in the house. Keeps you in the presence. Yep. Say so no like it up there. Right. And everything give thanks. Not everything that happens is God's will. Come on. Not everything that happens is God's will. I cite when Israel had to have a king, and God said, and I quote, that's not what I want. But give it to him anyway. Let me say that again. God the Father said, that is not what I want, but here comes Saul, their new king. Why did that happen? Because sometimes if we bend our will against God, he's going to let us have whatever we want. Sure will. And we'll soon find out it's not what his best for. Yeah. But he says, if things are going on that aren't right, give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Give thanks. Whatever's going on, be thankful. No matter. Thank you, Lord. I, we had a wreck going uh, home from Bloomington, Illinois. I couldn't wait to get home. I was riding down the interstate. Had my windows rolled down. Just, we'd just been married. And, and I, I, I'd gone up on a, a, work trip, a work trip and I had a guitar in the back of the stool because I'd done a gig on the way up. And we're coming home and I'm blasting my Christian music. I, I stopped at a, a, the first exit, bought a pack of Oreos for $4. And back then, that's a lot of money. But I didn't care. I wanted Oreos on my way back home. And we're blasting uh, the song. I'm going to take the song, take the, the message of Jesus to the world. And I'm just singing. And all of a sudden, a, a diesel truck rams me and ran into a, a bridge and bank and totals my truck. The paint on the hood flaps off in one solid sheet. Sherry's neck was broken. We didn't find that for 20 years later. I had packets of ketchup in the glove box that got smooshed out the crack, bubbled out the We hit so hard. We weren't wearing a seatbelt. I should have gone through the windshield. I think I bent the windshield with the steering wheel holding on. But when I got out of it, I, all I could hear the Holy Spirit say was reminding me of the sermon I just preached about giving thanks and all things. So I stood out there on the side of the road with my hands raised, thanking God, praising God, not knowing how we're going to get home. Right? The guy that hit me pulled over. He didn't have to, he didn't have to pull over. He pulled over. The, uh, right, it wasn't 10 seconds. A state trooper was there. He did an accident report. Two years later, to cut the chase, I got a brand new truck, I got a brand new sound system, and the Warrior album was purchased because of that incident. Was that God's will for my life? No, but what did he do? He turned it around so good. Yes. Sure did. And I think because I was able to raise my hands out there instead of stomping and, and cursing and stewing and fussing, I decided to just do what I said I told everybody else to do, and I began to praise God. And you know what? God held on to that moment and turned it around for something good. 
Heads and never said turn on. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> Alexa, turn them on. <laughs> right. Right. That's good. <laughs> That will be a race from all humanity because nobody will name their kid that. Alexa, shut up! Come in! Yes, please, shut up. Whoops. Well, here's the thing we got to get out of the big bad picture. God has a purpose when you get rejected or defeated or discouraged or when you fail. Hang on and tune in tomorrow night, same bat time and same bat station, and see how it all plays out. Do not remember the old Batman show? I don't do that when I was a kid. Y'all think we're going to give you a cliffhanger on Tuesday, so you watch on Wednesday. Your life's a cliffhanger. Hang on. Because you know what's coming? Sure don't. You ain't got no idea. You got a good, good father who wants to take care of you. He's going to bless you. He ain't got a plan to bless you. He's going to bless for you. He's going to bring you to the life of your life. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to quit comparing myself to everybody else because I'm not them. They are not me. That's right. That's right. As long as there is one more breath in you, there is still a chance. Yeah. If you don't quit, God's not quit. Amen. Romans 8 1 says, There is therefore no sentence to be carried out to them which are in Christ Jesus. I love this version. You know, no more condemnation. Well, here's what he's saying. The devil can't condemn me anymore because I've wiped out the sins. Yeah. I've wiped out the case. It's not on the books. It's not like we'll go back to it later, kid, when I'm feeling mad at you. I've wiped it out. Everything the devil had against you, everything that I had against you, has been wiped off the books. It's not there. You can't go back there. Even if the devil wants to make you guilty about your present sin, he still can't take you back to what Jesus bought for you on the cross. Amen. Next page. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. We, these are all quotable. I realize that. But you realize that the through part mm -hmm. is what we're losing is track of. Yeah. I do it through. I'm not doing it in my own strength. I'm doing it through. Right. And there are times when you realize, you realize that the most when your flesh gets knocked back. And you have to depend on him. And then we let him carry us out of a problem. And then after a while, we just kind of scoot him to the back. Right. Oh, that's right. Tell the truth. And that just set us up for another problem, right? Next time. Do you mind anything on this? Yeah, yeah. 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 that's good. But, Pastor Charlie, I have really messed up. <laughs> I have so messed up that I'm sure God's done with me. If I ever, I know, don't raise your hand because I know you probably wouldn't. But if you did, I'd feel really guilty at this moment. <laughs> If you ever have, if you've not had this problem, you haven't failed much. Right. Which means you probably haven't tried much. All right, come on. Because you don't, you don't get anywhere without failing some. Right, right. There's nobody I know. Come on, Greg. Greg, right? I mean, you just don't get anything that's worth anything without failing at it a few times. Because all that means is that every level is a place where the participation trophies will die off. Mm -hmm. And then if you want it, you just got to earn it. You just got to go get it. Yeah. I'm in a position right now, right now. I'm going to the doctor tomorrow, and I want him to give me the, the freedom to go back to the gym. And I'm telling you, before I turn 60, I want to look the best I've ever looked in my life. And I'm going to tell you something. That doesn't mean it's just going to jump at me off the mirror. All right. Come on. <laughs> 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 it means I gotta go in there and do stuff I don't like to do, like legs and cardio and and ab work and things that just don't look good until you take your clothes off and you're really glad. Because <laughs> it's getting warmer, and, you know, when you put that bathing suit on and, and you lay by the beach and people are trying to roll you back into the surf. <laughs> uh -huh. It's just really discouraging. <laughs> They're looking for the harpoon marks. And so, uh, 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 so I don't want to be that guy. I want to be somebody that's going to be your seat. Yeah, no, that's right. I've really messed up. Let me tell you a few stories. Next page. On, on the 2nd of October, 1978, Tim Allen Dick was arrested in Detroit for possession of a pound and a half of cocaine. Under Michigan law, he could have been sentenced to life in prison. 
He was sentenced to just five years under the more lenient, at that time, federal law, and he was paroled after two and a half years in federal prison next page. That's Tim Allen. Now, what if he'd have quit? What if he let his past define him? What if he let the, the stupidest thing he'd ever done set the course for the rest of his life? We, you know, we wouldn't have this guy. And now he's one of the most uh, successful actors in Hollywood because he just didn't give up and let that do it. And yeah, there's going to be people, and listen to me, there's going to be people always in your life that their whole life uh, is to try to remind you of who you used to be. But you know what? That's why God invented caller ID. That's why you don't have to necessarily go to Walmart when they're going to be there. And if you do, you can just grin at them and just run them with your buggy. And what are you going to do? But get them out of your life. You're not obligated to let them speak poison into your life. It's not who you were. It's who you are right now in Christ Jesus. Next page. J.K. Buck Rowland uh, was nearly penniless, several, a uh, severely depressed, divorced, trying to raise a child on her own while attending school and writing a novel. Rowland went from depending on welfare to survive to being one of the richest women in the world in a span of only five years through her hard work and determination. Next page. She wrote all the Harry Potter novels. And those, those novels have netted her, 50, go ahead, 15 Billion dollars. If you're doing the math, that's three billion dollars a year. That's pretty good money. I don't know where you're from, but I'd, I'd, I'd work for that. Wouldn't you? She could have quit. She could have stayed on welfare. She could have gotten around a bunch of other single mothers who wanted to whine and complain about their circumstances. And their la their lazy, uh, low life birth father. Or they could have just decided, you know what? This is not my lot in life. I will not let this define me. I will not let this quench the gift that God has given me. I will not let what they say tell me who I am. I know in whom I have believed. Next page. All these guys. Orange Macy fell seven times. Macy's department store. Uh, that guy, Honda, went to Toyota and they went hard. So he started his own company. That's why we have Hondas. Wow. Akio Morita was. His first product failed, and then he started a little thing called Sony. Wow. Harlan Sanders had 1,009 rejections, and I'm so thankful he pressed on for KFC. Can I have an amen? Yeah. Simon Cow, his record company folded, and his first show was canceled, but he kept pressing on. Now we have American Idol and uh, Britain and American Gut Talent and all these other things. He's a billionaire. The Wright Brothers. The Wright Brothers? <laughs> Brothers. Yeah, the brothers. The really blue there. The Wright brothers, they battled depression their whole life. Their first business, they tried to make a go of bicycles. Had they not pressed on, we would not have flight today. The Beatles, uh, when they pitched their first uh, songs to Decca, they were told the guitar is on its way out. <laughs> Marty, who does Decca think they are? <laughs> Decca is a, is a, it's got to be one of them. Uh, German words would mean stupid. Can I have an amen? <laughs> Van Gogh, in his entire life, sold one painting wow. and one ear. Uh, <laughs> uh, boy. Babe Ruth, oh. yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> Babe Ruth held the record for strikeouts yeah. before he held the record for home runs. Wow. Because you know what? If you don't swing hard, you're not going to hit it. That's right. And you might miss it, but if you don't swing hard to hit it in fear of missing it, You'll never get back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Thanks, man. First John 4 4. I think we're getting close to the end. It says, You're God, little children, and have already <coughs> overcome them. Because why? Because greater, greater is he, is he that is in you than he that is, he is, that is in the world. All time, every day, in any situation, yes, sir. greater is he. Greater is, is he. You. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they've got. That's why we need to embrace Jesus Christ yes, as our Lord and Master. Because once he's inside, once we're changed, that's all the devil yes. will ever have to do. And that's the last yes. thing the devil could have possibly do. We just shut him out at the gate by getting in the, by the blood. Next page. Here's the things I want us to do today as we leave you. I want you to repent. Whatever thoughts have got you nailed down and beaten up, you got to change your mind. Yep. Okay. That's what repent means. Yep. I'm going I'm to change. I'm going to let the conviction of God begin to dig into this place where I know I'm being disobedient. Yep. Okay. 
right. and I'm going to change how I think about it. I'm going to do what he says. It's just as simple. Right. Because listen, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to get the same result every right. time. Right. Right. If you want something different and new and exciting, if you want God's best, it's time for us to do this old fashioned thing about changing our mind, changing our direction. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to release whatever's got a hold of us, whatever we've got a hold of. Whatever thing you look at, me, whatever thing you're trying to work it out. Trying to make it turn out right. There's somebody maybe in your life that just won't forgive you. That just won't let it go. That just, that there's something, something in your life you won't forgive yourself for. You just can't ever get past. It's time to let it go. Okay. Let them go. Give them to God. Love Jesus and walk forward. All right. Come on. There may be a dream that you have not experienced in your life. Uh, something in your life you thought, this surely is it. This is the place where I can surely say I've succeeded. I've come to the place of the epitome, the apex. Let it go. Because he has something better, I promise you. Yeah. Whatever you think it is, if you think I've got to get married and I've got to have a baby, I've got to have a better job, I've got to, I've got to have a, a successful big church or a record deal, whatever it is, those are the things that drove me on my life. And God's saying, and that's why he spoke that to me, if you'll long for me like I long for you, you'll be satisfied. Because I'm going to tell you right now, that's all you want is to be satisfied. Yeah. When you're satisfied, they can put your favorite dessert in front of you and you go, can't eat another bite. Can't take any more. Surely my house is full. Wow. And he is the one that will provide that. Not the experience, right. not the accolade, not the record, not the exposure, not what all those things. None of that is going to do it. It's him. Yeah. The final thing is it's time to reboot. Unplug that thing and let's start again today. Let's just start again today. Not, and when you unplug it, all the stuff you didn't say, oops, is going to go away. Yeah. So we're not going to save any of that garbage. We're not going to save all the times we're rejected. We're not going to save all the heartache. We're not going to save all the, the depression and discouragement. We're going to let that go away. We're going to start all over today with a clean slate, a, clean, a blank slate that God can write his story on you. If you want. Yeah. Don't you buy him in the prayer real quick. You know, it's all going to come and do these three things. You come and you don't, and you don't have to. <laughs> Holy Spirit, I pray for everybody in this room. I've known a lot of a long time, and I'm also saying, Lord, I don't, I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody's story. You know your own story. And I'm saying, Lord God, let the power break the bondage, break the hole, break the, the generational curse I command to leave you in the name of Jesus. You will not follow in the footsteps of those that have come before you in your family. This is a new day. This is a new beginning. Yeah. Lord, I praise you right now, Lord God, that if we've lost things and made decisions that have gotten us into bondage of fear, drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever it is, we're breaking the power of it today because we are starting over right now. This is the day where I repent. This is the day, Lord God, where I release. This is the day where I reboot. This is the time where I know that you have a plan for my life. And even if I fail, you're going to work that into the plan. And the place is waiting to heaven like I want it to. I'm going to cling to you, knowing that at the end of this thing, I'm going to be perfect, entire, lacking, nothing. Because I thank you, Lord, for this journey, for this walk. In Jesus' name, I'm hoping this altar can also come.